very good morning to one and all on behalf of the whole team of teachers at Silver Point School. I have great pleasure in welcoming you to our annual primary and junior concert 2020. In today's celebration, our main star attraction are our students. So I heartily welcome them and you, the parents also. The journey with our little ones has been very exciting and our teachers have put their best foot forward in guiding and showcasing the hidden qualities of each and every child. Children are our tomorrow, our future. Bright faces that you will see today have the potential to become incredible citizens of our country. Without wasting much time, let us begin with the colorful dolls putting up the topic digital fairy tales. Welcome to Silver Point School concert. Good morning everyone. COVID-19 and our ongoing lockdown has deprived us of many joys of school. But it has not been able to take away our zest for living. We are learning to live in a new normal. So we take great pleasure in announcing that even in this pandemic situation, we have ventured to present a virtual junior concert. The children of the nursery and junior sections of Silver Point School have come together, guided by their teachers, to bring some joy as the units. We hope that we'll appreciate their efforts and enjoy the show. The concert begins with Saraswati Bandara to invoke the blessings of the goddess of learning and performing arts. The inaugural dance is performed by the students of class 5.
the great great moor jingling the bells on his sledge here's my friends this is the song the children of lower kg will dance to for their party so let us welcome santa to our party overcome a pandemic like the great covid-19 our lives have changed drastically in the present times technology has helped us to stay connected with each other if we start to imagine our classic fairy tales and characters in this modern age how would their own story turn out to be let's imagine that characters like red riding hood cinderella snow white and many more are friends and are bonded through this gift of technology they have all gathered in the year 2020 to retell their stories to the audience as well as share amongst them through this modern way of communication Cinderella has tried every diet out there 
from the well-known GM diet and the keto diet to the lesser-known rainbow diet. Every combination of food, vegetable and meat has entered her body in different portion sizes. The problem was that the food would enter her body but not leave. The kids in town would laugh at her weight and make fun of her. What happened? Look at the size of your belly. Ha ha ha! I am fit and fine. You have a big fat belly. Can't you see it yourself? Ha 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 ha! These comments made Cinderella cry the entire day. Her stepmother was nice, even though her children were annoying. She would help her research new diets and prepare the food she needed. Her stepmother would also motivate her and encourage her when she felt like giving up. This time's diet was a combination of vegan and a careful portion control. The reason Cinderella was giving up cake was because there was going to be a dance at school and she wanted to wear a nice dress and look pretty. But this was mostly for herself. Come Sintitra darling, I will help you to follow a better diet chart. For the time being, you can have a small piece of cake. Mom, I cannot have a cake too. It is too fat me. Nothing will happen. Don't worry. No, I have an upcoming dance performance in school. I should look attractive and thin. So Cinderella worked hard, went to the gym and stuck to the eating terrible leaves three times a day. Her stepmother and father cheered her on and even her sisters seem impressed by her efforts. Come on my child, you can do it. You are the best. Keep it up. Oh my God, you are really try hard. Seriously, you are putting great efforts. I just hope this dress fits me now. I will feed you dear. Try it out once. Oh mom, it is still tight around my tummy. Cinderella felt tears in her eyes as she held the dress that fit hard on her stomach and tried to yank down the dress. But her stepmother quickly helped her out of it, explaining that it would hurt her. Her stepmother came forward to hug her. Don't cry. You are beautiful enough even if you don't fit in the dress. You have been walking so hard. I am very proud of you. And you should be proud of yourself too. But what will I do tomorrow? I will fix the dress for you. And if that also doesn't work, then you and I can go dancing together somewhere else where you can wear comfortable clothes. We told in today's perspective, Little Red Riding Hood had just come back home from school. Her mother was very sick and so she agreed to help with the course. Darling, I am not well today. Will you help me with the household chores? Sure, mom. I would love to. Her mother wanted to give Red's grandmother some fruits as grandmother could not walk properly. So 
she ordered Red to go to Grandma's house and deliver them. I need another help. Your grandmother is not well. She cannot walk properly. Can you deliver some fruits to her place? She agreed, took the fruits, pocketed her mo mother's mobile phone and left on her cycle after waving her pet dog goodbye. On the way to grandma's house, Wolf saw her. He was in a bad mood and wanted to prank her or eat her, whichever happened first. Hmm, let's prank her. She can be a good dinner for tonight. Wolf followed her to the middle of the densely populated city. Wolf took a shortcut through an alley. Red wasn't paying attention to any of this. She was in her own world. I am just so excited. My birthday is coming. Should I buy an iPad or a laptop? When Red stopped to buy chocolate at the best chocolate shop in the city, Wolf had already reached Grandma's house. He was jubilant. Finally, I have reached my destination. Should I eat the grandma or the girl? Both would be equally delicious. But why is the door locked? Wolf rang the doorbell and knocked over the door 132 times. Two hours and 36 minutes later, Red arrived at the house and she saw the wolf. Hey wolf, why are you here? Wolf tried to act smart. Well, you know that I live in a cave, right? And the cave is very hot because of the sun. I just wanted the ice. Well, as long as you're here, let's take a selfie and post it on Instagram. Wolf agreed. And they took a picture. However, Red thought that the wolf was acting very suspiciously. While he wasn't looking, she posted the picture on her Instagram story, mentioning that he was a criminal and sharing her location details. When Grandma finally opened the door, Wolf was about to pounce on her. Suddenly, Red's father, who was a lumberjack and a police officer, caught hold of Wolf's shirt and handcuffed him. What was that all about? Red explained the situation to her. Good job, my young girl. But remember not to post your selfies casually on a social platform until it's needed. So Red gave grandmother fruits and cycled back to Be safe, my darling. The modernized version followed the story of a young woman called Aurora Beleza who had a car accident by accidentally pricking her finger on a pin. She sadly is now in coma in a hospital. I'm sorry, but your daughter has gone into coma. What? I can't believe this. Philip, my daughter has gone into coma. I want you to pay her a visit. I would try to help the princess and your family in any possible way. Her really close friend, Prince Philip, is on his journey to visit Aurora at the hospital. This made him search for the princess by taking the help of Google Maps to trace her exact location. 
emailing King Stephen the address, posting his thoughts on Facebook, tweeting his status, ordering flowers on the Amazon, and playing games in the waiting room. Finally, we see him kissing Aurora to wake her up. Oh, Aurora, you are finally back into my life. All my prayers are answered. Let me get you both married soon. Oh, Dad, I love you so much. Thank you, Dad. So, King Stephen got both of them married and, like in all fairy tales, they lived happily. The murmur of the sea foam and the crash of the briny tides, squawks of the seagulls and inconceivable depth ocean horse, all kinds of alluring life. Beneath the surface thrived jubilant beings that were much like humans except for their aquatic tails that moved deftly through the waters. One among them was a young mermaid named Ariel. She had curious eyes that matched the aquamarine hues of the ocean in which she lived. Ariel wasn't like the rest of the merfolk. She longed for a life on land among the humans. How I wish I had a life of a human being. I wish to live with them in the world. When she decided to swim as close to the shore as possible, she saw a beautiful young man. He had the ethereal eyes that she would stare into forever. Wow! Who is this young man? He is so divinely attractive. I wish to look at me with some love and affection. Let's dump this garbage into this pond-like water body. I need to get rid of this dirt soon. But she was snapped out of her trance when the man flung something into the water. A white bag made of a strange material that Ariel didn't recognize. She realized that she was surrounded by these objects and it felt like she was being imprisoned by them. What did he throw at me? I feel I have been put into a prison. It's so suffocating. The plastic edges were stab stabbing at her tail fin. Ouch! It is hurting my tail. I can feel the pain. She looked to a large menacing vessel above her. As it drifted towards her, it expelled an unfamiliar substance. She stared in horror at the dense, dark emulsion blanketed the surface and trapped innocent creatures. Ariel swam back to the ocean depth. She had to do something about this. She had to stop the humans. But how? Humans are so disrespectful towards the marine life and that we live. It is as if we have no existence at all. I need to do something about it so that my mates too can live a clean and healthy life. She swam into the infamous sea witch's lair to negotiate. I have come to you to make a deal with you. I request you to offer me legs instead of the tail I possess. I need to go to the human world to teach the humans a lesson to lead a pollution-free life. Hmm, what do I get in return? Whatever you want, I just want to save our marine life. Then you must be ready to sacrifice anything whenever I tell you to do so. I agree. Her wish would be granted. Ariel would have legs in the place of her tail. She would be human. 
She was determined to achieve her goals. She swam to the surface with her new legs and set off on a quest to save her new home. Once upon a time, as Rapunzel sat daydreaming, an idea suddenly came to her. Perhaps if I book the pampering spa day, Mother Gothel may feel happier and beautiful and set me free. Rapunzel uses a smartphone to begin searching for spa days and books Mother Gothel in the luxurious spa offering the full day packages. Thank God! With the help of these modern technologies, I could book all the best packages for Mother Gothel. She would be super impressed. Now, Rapunzel just had to find a way for Mother Gothel to get there without knowing about the surprise. Rapunzel realizes the next day Mother Gothel would take an Uber shopping to buy supplies for Rapunzel. She changes the booking just in time the next morning. There, there is a phone. Let's change the destination on the Uber app. Mother Gothel is surprised when her Uber pulls up at the luxurious spa retreat. Ma'am, this is your destination. You need to get down. Payment is already done. Before she could say a word, a member of the staff visits Mother Gothel through the spa, handing her a fresh bathrobe and fresh youth smoothie. What's going on? Ma'am, there is a booking on your name. We are here to give you the best of our services for the entire day. Mother Gothel relaxes, allows her hair to be dyed, enjoys her pampering sessions at the spa. When Mother Gothel returned, she thanked Rapunzel for planning her a surprise at the spa. Thank you, Rapunzel. I feel amazing now. See that keeping you here is wrong. Sorry, Rapunzel. You are free to leave. The Uber is outside waiting for you. As the curtain comes down on the modernized version of the fairy tales, we wish to thank our headmistress, Madam Shuchurita Roy Chudri, and the school management for encouraging us in this endeavor. The parents who have allowed their children to participate must also be thanked for their support. We wish that the year ends on the hopeful note that the COVID vaccine will be out soon and we will be able to resume our normal activities in school. Thank you.